Hey, dude, how you doing, Ryan? I, I'm sorry about that. I, I literally put you on hold for like five seconds, and I came back, and you're gone. I'm yeah, uh, it disconnected, so I figured you had something going on, so I figured I'd just wait, you know, five minutes or so, just give you a ring back, man. No, that's cool. I appreciate you doing that. It's just, you know, it's like when they set up interviews, they right. always run a little bit longer, probably because I'm just a chatty Cathy, and I just talk too much. Um, hey, no, it's that's uh that's like it reminds me of my, my first uh gig in radio was uh i worked at this am station in chardon ohio and uh this guy did i did morning sir you know and a you know, guy used to come in and be like he's like boy he's like you have the gift the gab he's like your your breaks are running long i'm like i'm sorry man i like talking about music you know but but uh anyway yeah. man uh well dude first off I, i've been a fan of you for a long time man uh so i i appreciate you uh taking the time to speak with me this afternoon i really do thank you brian i appreciate you saying that not a problem. Um, and, um, cool. So, are you in radio? You have a very radio-like voice. Yeah, man. Uh, I grew up. Uh, I grew up in Northeast Ohio, uh, outside of Cleveland. I worked in. Um, I did, you know, top forty radio. I did, you know, like hard rock stuff uh, in the late nineties, early two thousands, and I uh, got out of it for a while and did some like corporate, you know, worked for Verizon Wireless and did some corporate tech support stuff for a while, and then uh, I've been doing the. I moved to Nashville. Yeah, about eight years ago, uh, this April actually, and uh, cool. you know, I had a buddy of mine. He was like, "Man, he's like, uh, he's like, you ever thought about doing, you know, getting into podcasting and stuff?" And I was like, "Yeah, I thought about doing it." And I was like, "Man, Nashville would be a good place to start it." And I've been doing it for about four years now, and uh, it's been going good, man. I, I just released uh, my 242nd show this week. I've interviewed 500 bands from across the globe. Uh, I do, I work at uh, three different uh, venues here in town as a house photographer and stuff. So I just been, you know, keeping busy, man, with you know, kids, family, you know, the whole deal. Yeah. I guess that's cool. Well, it yeah. sounds like you're you're doing what you love to do, talking about what you love to talk about, yeah, and making a living at it. That's the dream. That's the catch for sure, man. You know, um, I have I have a fun story I would like to share with you uh, about seeing you for the first time uh, in 1996. If you want to hear it, of course. Okay, so um, it's at the old Odeon in the Flats in uh, Cleveland, and oh, uh, yeah. I, yeah. Uh, I am, um, I, I think I'm like 17, maybe 18 at that point. Uh, me and a bunch of my, you know, buddies of mine, you know, we, we drive up to the Odeon, right? And, uh, we get some joints rolled. It was like, you guys, Letters to Cleo, um, I, I can't think of the, of the third band, but, uh, so anyway, you know, in between sets, you guys had not gone on yet. I'd get caught smoking a joint in the middle of the Odeon, right? And, uh, oh, no. the security guy goes, he goes, you have, uh, he's like, you got two choices. He goes, you can leave now, or he's like, or you can wait for the cops to get here. And being the smart ass that I was at 17, I go, well, can't you just take me to the bathroom and rough me up a little bit so I can safe watch the show? And he looked at me, he goes, get the hell out of here. And he pushed me out the door. So I had to walk around the block and I get to listen to your guys' set through the wall of the Odeon on the, in the, in the, oh. you know, so, but I, I mean, I've seen you guys, you know, plenty of times since then, but that was my first time. I was really excited. I was, you know, 17. I was like, I'm going to go watch Everclear. It's one of my favorite bands, you know, and I got kicked out for smoking a joint at the Odeon. I was like, can you guys just take me to the bathroom, rough me up a little bit, and I can stay and watch the show? And they're like, get out of here, kid. You're out of here, you know? But I, yeah, I, no, well, here. I've, I've got a story that, that that's kind of like that. All right. Only take it, take it back 20 years, right? Okay. So it's 1980. I had just turned 18 two days before, so it's like April 14th, um, 1980, and me and my friends were going to see Ted Newton <laughs> and the Scorpions. <laughs> and, um, you know, and I had long hair. I was really into punk rock and stuff, but I refused to cut my hair because I thought it was more punk rock to go to a punk rock show and get in a bunch of fights and and not you know look like all those other dweebs, you know, so that was my thing. But so we're going to a rock concert. We're walking through the parking lot and this guy comes up to us and shows me this LSD and it looks like Christmas trees, like, you know, big trees, little trees. I'm looking at it. And all of a sudden someone walks up from behind, grabs my wrist, flashes an, a, a police badge oh. and, goes and i'm just like holy fuck and puts the cuffs on us and this and this guy this guy's not even like starsky and hutch and i i think he thought i was hispanic because i'm greek you know yeah. and he's like okay dude where's where's the doses chico where's the you know where's the doses <laughs> yeah. and to this day i tell i tell friends that story and they call me chico all the time <laughs> just, but but the point is he was gonna let us go because they caught the people who sold it to me because the guy ran away and the guy had like, you know, he was a dealer. He had like 20 pages, like 
you know, 2,000 hits. Yeah. And I have this one little hit in my hand that I haven't even bought. And, and the guy, you know, was like, you know, they're calling in, they're doing all this stuff. I'm like, really, are you going to bust me for one hit of acid? Why don't you just take the ass and let's go to the rock shop? Right. And the guy's like, well, you know, you, you break the law. And I go, oh, I guess LAPD still hasn't grown up yet. <laughs> and they both turned and looked at me. And they're like, all right, smart ass. We were going to let you go. We were just trying to scare you a little bit. But you just you just bought a night in jail. Ah. In downtown LA. I'm like, oh, fuck. Okay. And I learned, do not talk shit to a cop. Yeah. Don't, don't talk shit to a cop. You're not going to win. He's got a bat. He's got a gun. Yeah. They're, they're going to win. Yeah, it never, it never goes well talking, getting a, either a sarcastic tone or being a smart ass to a cop. It never works, whether regardless of how old you are, it never works. <laughs> well, that guy that you did it, he was the cop. You weren't going to win. No, you know, yeah. You probably yeah. felt good being a smart ass for about, what, five seconds? Yeah, until he showed so me out the front door, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah. I could have, I could have, you could have found a way to work it. I'm like, man, it's my favorite band. Um, I'm, take the joint, throw it away, whatever. Let me see the band. Come yeah. on, I'm a kid. Let me, <laughs> let me, let me do this. Right. If, if you do, uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, You man. know how to do that now as an adult and as a dad how to finesse the situation. But, uh, yeah, I was that guy. I was that guy. That's awesome. Man. Well, I know you mentioned, uh, you know, your birthday coming is actually coming up here in a couple weeks. Uh, my birthday is, it's, it's funny you mentioned April 14th cause my birthday is actually April 14th, 1980, which is weird. But, um, and do you do anything to no celebrate? Way. Yeah, no, seriously. Yeah. Swear to God. No. Yeah. You were born on that day, the day I got thrown in jail. Yes. Yes. Really? Yes, for sure. Oh my God. <laughs> That's, that's a great story. Now that you is... can tell that story, and it's got two levels. That's a good one. Um, yeah. yeah, no, my birthday is the 12th. I turn 56 on the 12th. Any oh, uh, any cool. plans for, for celebration? I know you obviously uh, the Summerland tour is coming up, uh, you know, mid May or whatever. And we talk about that moment if you like. But um, any plans for your birthday? Is you you do something with the family, the wife, kids? So you get together, do dinner or something like that? Or well, we usually do something like that. Um, uh, you know, my daughter is big for her. She's 10 years old. You've got kids. Yeah. She loves going to Benihana on someone's birthday. So for my birthday, we're going to go to Benihana. Uh, like it or not, that's what we do. Nice. Um, usually my wife tries to do something fancy, but we're right. In the, we just closed on a house that we've, you know, been in escrow with for the last month. And it's been so straining and drama and stress that um i mean we literally i got the call today as i was doing the walkthrough in the house and i get the keys it records at eight o'clock tomorrow i get the keys at nine it's done we bought the house congratulations thank you and um we haven't really been planning on doing anything else and all our money's tied up in that so you know my wife's like i don't know what to do i go I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I really don't care. You know, let's go to Benihana. Yeah, man. Um, buy me a shirt. Um, you know, I, 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 I really don't care. You know, yeah, I, I if think I hit, if, if I hit 75, then let's celebrate. Let's have a party. But other than that, I don't care. Yeah, I feel like, you know, 21 and then like 30, you know, and, and maybe 50, I guess. And after that, the rest of them are just kind of like, I don't know, like, can I have a, a decent meal and a, and, a, and a cold drink somewhere if possible, you know? Um, you know, well, you know I, I, I'm, I'm a normal guy, dude. I want to have a nice meal, um, spend time with my kids, and then have some sex with my life, wife later. That's winning. Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> men, are, men are men are fucking simple. We're it's simple, easy, man. We're just we're simple animals. No doubt uh, about it, man. It's, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's it's and, and you know it's like I've got famous friends and stuff like that, but you know I, all my famous friends and me, we usually celebrate birthdays with our family. That's what we do, and and I get it. No, so, uh, um. You, 
Yeah, let's talk about the tour because they're going to call in with another. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Um, you know, the Summerland tour uh, starts, I think, May seventeenth. I think this is the sixth year you, you guys have, have put this together. And um, this yeah. year with uh, Local H, who I love, I love Scott Lucas and Local H. Those guys are fantastic. Two piece band. They've been around for a long time. They're fantastic live. Mercy Playground. Uh, a little bit different style, I think, than you guys have had on, on previous tours. And obviously, uh, Everclear headlining. What is the um, what's the selection process like uh, year after year for you as far as you know, getting bands from from that time frame in, in the nineties? to come out on the road with you? Honestly, to be honest with you, it's bands I like. Okay. I want to play with bands that I like. And I love Local H. I love Marcy Playground. All three bands are bands that don't play with tracks or elect- Pro Tools or Auditune or any of that right. stuff. We're all, in our own way, old school rock and roll bands. And that's exciting to me. And I think it's exciting. And you're dealing with three guys who are singer songwriters that that write write the songs and and create the image of the band, you know. And that's I think it's a really great tour. It's a great summerland tour. And I try to mix it up, different types of bands, anyone from you know, uh, Lit to E6 to um, Sugar Ray. And, uh, we had Soul Asylum, who was a very influential band for me. So, yeah, you know, just trying to mix it up and, and do music that we love to do and play with bands that we love. Well, I, I, I enjoy that. A lot of those bands you mentioned, I, I'm, I'm huge fans of as well. Is there, um, I know in in your history, you've worked as like an A&R rep and stuff for label set. Is there some new bands out there right now that you really enjoy listening to? Do you think, man, this band really has has the it factor. Man, they're writing some really quality songs. I'd like to maybe, you know, pair up with some of these newer bands and, and, and do a, a short tour, whether it be this fall or next year or something. Well, I don't know about touring with them because I, I, I do one tour a year and that's Summerland and that's 90s bands, but there's bands I really like. There's a couple of bands. Um, I really like Highly Suspect. Yes. Um, and I, I really like um, uh um, blinking on them, uh, Royal Blood, because um, they're rock bands, yeah. you know? and there's not a lot of rock bands, contemporary rock bands, that really rock and have a sense of themselves and have their own sound, and I think those two bands do, for sure. Those are actually two bands that I was I was thinking about. Another one that I'm a huge fan of is uh, Red Sun Rising out of uh, Akron, Ohio, uh, partly because, you know, they're hometown guys for me, but uh, if you haven't heard those guys, I would, you know, Give, give what a listen. In, uh, Red Sun Rising. Oh, I love the name. No, yeah, uh, I, I'll check them out. Yeah, if you get I'll if you get a chance, out. you're just you know looking for something to uh, to pique your interest uh, as far as listening. I, I'll throw that one out there for you. But um, with this tour, obviously you got you know, I mean Everclear. What you are you at a dozen albums I think now at this point? Um, and you've mentioned I, I think at the press release you talk about uh, World of Noise being it's 25 years, which is crazy to think that album is is at that level at 25 years now. But um, what's the set list writing for you nightly? Is it kind of a do you are, are you rehearsing you know 18 to 25 songs and and then you know, you go out and just kind of mix it, you know, mix it up every night for for the Summerland tour. Well, Summerland tour usually we usually we have a pretty short set because it's usually four bands. I keep the set short, the show pretty tight. It's it's kind of a throwback to the '90s radio shows if you remember them. You were probably you were working in radio in the '90s. Yeah. You know, where a band would come out, play their hits, play their new single, play a few fan favorites, boom, gone. And that was the idea behind it. This year with three bands, um, we get to stretch out a little bit more. And something I'm doing, um, we're doing, that we're excited about is we we usually play uh, a set of about 20 songs, anywhere from 17 to 20 songs. Uh, this year, for this for, for Summer Live, it's probably going to be about 15. And we'll play all the hits. Uh, we'll play a couple of fan favorites that we always do. But other than that, we, we've got a list of like 15 Everclear songs that are like, that we are either our favorites or fans have requested that we haven't played in a while. And we're going to revolve that around from show to show this year. So it's, this year it's going to be much more different from, from, from set to set. Well, I'm looking forward to catching you in in, in Nashville here, uh, I think right around Memorial Day weekend, I believe on the 23rd. Uh, yeah. As far as uh, 
set list ready. I know you're obviously probably getting you know stuff on Twitter like oh play um, Summerland or play uh, you know something off World of Noise or whatever. Uh, when you get those requests, did you ever go, man, I haven't, you know, it was it a, you know, a song and you go, man, do I remember the lyrics? How often do you have to go to Google to find out your own lyrics? Do you ever have that oh, happen to you? Of course. I, yeah, I, of course. I mean, it's like, you know, sometimes, look, I've written 130, 140, maybe yeah. more songs. I don't remember them all. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes, you know, we'll listen to it. And we'll have to rehearse it a lot. I mean, we'll rehearse before this tour. And we're not going to rehearse Father of Mine or Santa Monica or I'll Buy You a New Life or Wonderful. I mean, we know those songs. Yeah. But, you know, we're going to play Twist Inside. We'll rehearse that. We're going to play off the first album, um, uh, Genius Amp. Um, and, you know, it, we'll rehearse that. We'll rehearse songs, a song called Slide that's on... Uh, songs from American, uh, American songs from American movie volume two, and you know I haven't played that live in 20 years, or 15 or 16, whatever it was been. So yeah, it's uh, you know we did the Afterglow tour last year, where we played the whole album, Fuck One Fake tour, two years before that, and I had to go back and learn some of those songs, you know that we don't play all the time. And uh, and some of those songs we had never played live ever. Wow! And uh, it was really fun doing that every night because it was it made it new, you know. And fans loved it. So yeah, we're we're gonna break out some deep some deep hits, some deep cuts. Yes, I, I mean I, that makes I mean as a fan of of you guys as a band, it really makes me excited to hear. Uh, you know, I, I think with anything though, like when you write something, especially when you look at songs that you wrote, you know, 25 years ago or more, you know, when, when you revisit them or you're, you know, kind of look, you know, rehearsing them for the first time again, maybe in, in 20 years, do those songs, you know, when you read the words, does it kind of take you back to that that time, maybe as a different perspective? Do you have different a different view of some of these older songs than maybe you did, you know, 20 years ago? Well, you know what? Yeah, I mean, that's true with all all of our songs. I have to stay present with them. I, our, our kind of lyrics are are not my, my kind of lyrics are not the kind of lyrics that you can phone in. You know, if I sing Father of Mine, I've got to be connected to it. I've got to relive it. I got to bring it up every night. You know, I mean, I've got people crying and singing the lyrics in the front row, and I've got to give them the respect of, of emoting that feeling as it comes. And yeah, perspective changes you go on, but you know that's true with anything. A song that you loved 20 years ago, you might listen to now and still like it, but you're looking at it as a guy who's 20 years older. You know, it's it's different. You know, it. But uh, the the really good songs evolve and change with you because they they work on different levels, and that's what I've always tried to do when I write songs because that's what I like. As a, as a fan, you know. Well, uh, Art, it's been a pleasure. I know we're uh, we're on a time crunch here, man. So I'll let you run. I feel like we we could keep going here. I don't want to you know bind you up too much schedule wise, man. So maybe we can uh, when you come to Nashville, let's let's uh, get together and hang out if if you'd be into doing that. And uh, I'd love to just hang out with you and just and just talk and, and you know share share some stories and and just kind of pick your brain some at some point. If that'd be cool with you, man. I'd love to, man. Set it up. That'd be great. Awesome. Well, uh, Art, I, I get. Dude, thank you for uh, sharing the awesome story of getting busted with LSD back in 1980 on my birthday uh, when I was born. That's hilarious. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you uh, uh, again for writing great songs, man. I mean, I, I think that that speaks volumes uh, to you as a uh, as a songwriter, musician, to be able to connect to people on a uh, deep um, level uh, through telling stories uh, via song. And I think a lot of not a lot of rock bands. I don't want to obviously trash any bands, but a lot of the, the newer bands, I think, kind of have lost their way uh, if, when it comes to that, at least personally for me. I think you're right. And well, thank you for saying that, first of all. I appreciate it. And I'm just, you know, I'm just at an age with my sobriety and what I do and my family. I'm very present in my life. I'm very grateful and very, um, I, 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 I know. I, I know who I am. I know what what I do, and I try to do it the best I can every day. And that's all any of us can do. And I realize that I'm living the dream, man. I'm 55, 
56 in a few days. And I get to play guitar in a rock band still and live a nice life and buy a house and live with my wife and my kid. And it, you know, I, I, those are the, that, that's what life is about. The other stuff, all the, the fame and all that stuff, that's not what life is about. And it's, you know, like anybody, I learned it. You know, I, I never thought it was, but I learned that it really wasn't. And um, glamour doesn't really exist. It's just something people make up, and the real things are the are the special, shiny things in your life, are the things that I think people tend to take for granted every day, and I don't do that. And it sounds like you don't either. So thank no. you, man. I appreciate it. No, I'm all about the substance, man, uh, and I think that's when it comes down to it. Like I said, you know, when you get older, you know, think your your perspective changes, and whether things happen to you or you know people happen to your family or whatever the case may be, everyone's got a different story, of course. But uh, I think the having those things of, of substance uh, in your life are vital to uh, you know continuing your growth as a as a human in this world. You know. Yeah, I thank you. I appreciate that. Take care, right. man. Hey, brother. Thanks a lot for the time, man. And uh, yeah, we'll, I'll catch you in Nashville soon, man. I'll see you in Nashville. Take care. All right. Thank you.